you will prevail. That's not really the end of the speech, so don't get too excited. The reason I know you'll prevail is because so many others have done it before you. I grew up without much access to technology. We didn't get our first telephone till I was 10. I didn't have regular access to a computer until I came to America for graduate school. Under television, when we finally got one, only had one channel. So imagine how awestruck I am today to be speaking to you on a platform that has millions of channels. By contrast, you grew up with computers of all shapes and sizes. The ability to ask a computer anything, anywhere, the very thing I've spent my last decade working on, is not amazing to you. That's okay. It doesn't make me feel bad. It makes me hopeful. You will make the world better in your own way, even if you don't know exactly how. The important thing is to be open-minded so that you can find what you love. For me, it was technology. The more access my family had to technology, the better our lives got. So when I graduated, I knew I wanted to do something to bring technology to as many others as possible. At the time, I thought I could achieve this by building better semiconductors. I mean, what could be more exciting than that? My father spent the equivalent of a year's salary on my plane ticket to the US so I could attend Stanford. It was my first time ever on a plane. But when I eventually landed in California, things weren't as I had imagined. America was expensive. A phone call back home was more than $2 a minute, and a backpack cost the same as my dad's monthly salary in India. And for all the talk about the warm California beaches, that water was freezing cold. On top of all that, I missed my family, my friends, and my girlfriend, now my wife, back in India. A bright spot for me during this time was computing. For the first time in my life, I could use a computer whenever I wanted to. It completely blew my mind. And at that same moment, the internet was literally being built all around me. The year I arrived at Stanford was the same year the browser mosaic was released, which would popularize the World Wide Web and the internet. The summer I left was the same summer that a graduate student named Sergey Brin met a prospective engineering student named Larry Page. These two moments would profoundly shape the rest of my life. But at the time, I didn't know it. It took me a while to realize that the internet would be the single best way to make technology accessible to more people. And as soon as I did, I changed course and decided to pursue my dreams at Google. Inspired by the wonder that first browser created in me, I led the effort to launch one called Chrome in 2009 and drove the effort to help Google develop affordable laptops and phones so that a student growing up in any neighborhood or village in any part of the world could have the same access to information as all of you. Had I stayed the course in graduate school, I'd probably have a PhD today, which would have made my parents really proud, but I might have missed the opportunity to bring the benefits of technology to so many others. And I certainly wouldn't be standing here speaking to you as Google CEO. Believe me when I say I saw none of this coming when I first touched down in the state of California 27 years ago. The only thing that got me from there to here, other than luck, was a deep passion for technology and an open mind. So take the time to find the thing that excites you more than anything else in the world. Not the thing your parents want you to do, or the thing that all your friends are doing, or that society expects of you. I know you're getting a lot of advice today, so let me leave you with mine. Be open, be impatient, be hopeful. You have the chance to change everything. I'm optimistic you will. A lot of people in this room are, are dreaming about tomorrow. It, it, it's a beautiful part of India that's in this room and they're all dreaming about tomorrow. And it'll be interesting to ask, what did you dream about when, when there was time to dream about tomorrow for you? I always loved technology uh, growing up uh, and uh, you know, so I had dreams of uh, just not exactly what I would do, but I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, at that time, you know, I used to read about what was happening in Silicon Valley and, you know, I wanted to go be a part of it. Uh, 
So I don't exactly dream a career as much as a destination. One of the things we talk about in sport is that sometimes it's easier to get to number one than stay number one. And Google has done an amazing job of staying number one. Mm -hmm. how, how do you handle that challenge? Because when you are number one, everyone wants to be you. So how do you, how do you take on the challenge of staying number one? You know, from our perspective, and I think it's true for uh, in technology in particular, you know, the world keeps changing, as I said earlier. So, uh, you know, a big part of what I focus on at any given time is, you know, making sure we are innovating and building products for the future. You know, it's just got to be a normal course of how you think. Um, and so, you know, we are constantly thinking about what to do next. So, you know, Android is very popular. People are using smartphones. But, you know, I always sit and think about what is the next version of how people use computing, right? And so we are thinking about, you know, things like virtual reality or augmented reality. So these are all new areas, but we are constantly thinking about it. And so you have to do that uh, on a constant basis uh, to push forward. Because Google is a great example. The, the tech world is littered with shooting stars that, that came up, that shot, that lit up the world. And literally, like meteors went away, Google has, has been phenomenally successful in bucking that trend. Yeah, and I, you know, and I, I think, I think we, we've always had a very ambitious mission. Uh, you know, we wanted to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible. I think in the context of smartphones and how people use it around, if anything, that mission is even more relevant. There's a lot more information uh, which people consume, so we want to do a better job of that. And we feel like we are in early days of that mission, you know, with things like uh, what we call as machine learning and artificial intelligence. Uh, we'll be able to do do much better with all of these things, and uh, and you know so for us the journey is just getting started. I do think it's important to follow your dream and uh, do something which you're uh, you know excited by. Uh, you know so I think if you follow your heart and do what you like, you will always do much better. Uh, and so I don't think it matters that you're an engineer or uh, you're a you know you're in science or it could be in any field. One other thing I've noticed over time is. You, know, you you will have many 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 opportunities to, opportunities to reinvent yourself, and so uh, you know. So I think you know it's worthwhile taking risks and trying to do something you're really uh, you know excited by. And if the first attempt you don't do it, you know you can try again, and you know things tend to work out in the long run. The attitude to failure in this generation is very different from mine. Mm -hmm. In my generation, to fail was to commit a crime, mm -hmm. and yet what you're talking about is go do what you want. And there's always comebacks, aren't there? That's right. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think that's how, you know, in Silicon Valley, you know, uh, you know, part of the reason so many people st start up a company is, you know, starting up a company and even having failed, you know, you can wear it like a badge of honor, right? And uh, and I think that's important. You know, culturally, you know, uh, risk is rewarded. I remember when I started working at Google, you know, I, if if I went and you know, people were discussing ideas. The other people who heard the ideas try to build on those ideas. They encourage you. So it's a culture of optimism. It's a culture of risk taking, and I think that's really important. I would actually encourage all of you. You know, if at some point in your life, you know, you have to work with people where you feel a bit insecure, right? That's essential because that means you're working with people who are better than you and who are pushing you, right? And uh, so I always encourage if you if you actually feel very secure in what you do. Uh, you know, that means you're doing something comfortable and you're not pushing yourself. And so uh, there are many, many times I've felt uh, working with people in a group, am I doing enough? Uh, these people seem much better than me. And I think, I think that's an inherent part of learning. You want to aim high enough that you fail, uh, you know, a few times. I think that's the natural part of the process. Uh, in fact, you know, Larry used to say, if you aim, if you work on really difficult things, you're better off because you have no competition. Others aren't working on uh, yeah. that difficult yeah. a problem. And even if you fail, you end up doing something great in the sure. process. And so I think that's the philosophy which has guided us all through these years. I hope, you know, as people are approaching things, they are really taking the time to doing things, you know, in a deeper way, you know, understanding things deeper, uh, learning by doing things. And, uh, you know, I think it's important to remember it's a long road. Setbacks actually don't matter. Uh, you know, I think a lot of times when I was younger, you know, people would say, you know, this person didn't get into this college or something, and that's the end of the road. I mean, life is so different from that. And so I think it's important to, you know, uh, keep your hopes, keep your, keep your dreams, and try to follow them. And, you know, I think, I think most of how life plays out is up to you, not up to, uh, up to what happens uh, outside of you. And I think it's important to keep that in mind and take the long-term view. If you feel very comfortable in what you're doing, 
I, you know, I don't think you're pushing yourself enough. And so I think it's, you always want to strive to be in environments where you feel the people around you are a little bit better than you are. There are many, many different ways, uh, you know, you can approach things. And what matters most is, you know, loving what you're doing and, uh, and trying to do well at it. Life's a long road. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so you want to you take it at the right pace and enjoy